Stillwater's Morning Scramble, and the superintendent of schools, Dr. Mark Moore, is in. Good to see you. Yes, good morning. Safe distancing across the room, like your mask. It's a sharp-looking mask. Yeah, I picked this up, I think, at Target. They had a couple of, a navy one and a black one for a pair for $4, I believe, but it's worked out really well. Well, that's a good mask there. So I yeah. see several that look like that. Uh-huh. You know, the, the issue I have is, you know, we're wearing around the office, probably you too, is our glasses. Right, yes. So I'm trying to figure out my strategy with, with glasses, but this mask seems to do a lot better than some of my other ones. Well, that and uh, and uh, you don't, but uh, I'm getting to the point where it's time to find a place to cut my hair again. I'm just and, and we've been able to do uh-huh. that, but you don't do it as often for some reason. Right, right. But just the little things. So I notice that with the mask and stuff, and you go, oh, boy, I do need a haircut. Huh? <laughs> so just a reminder. <laughs> well, we we were joking in the office the other day. We go through it, have a lot more Google Meets and, and Zoom oh, meetings, yeah. which are video conferencing, and, and what it does, it it gives you a visual of you on the screen. So yeah. you start noticing stuff kind of a little bit more. Yeah. 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 That and um, I've noticed, especially in watching the news, you can tell what industry pays more than others by the by where they live almost. That's not fair to say. But print media is in a normal house. Uh-huh. You go to an anchor's house. Of course, they're the anchor of a major network. Or whatever, right. And you go, wow, they have a nice lake and a pond back there. An open space. Everybody gets to, <laughs> has to show off where they live, too. You start seeing... About paintings and pictures on the wall and, and lots of books yeah. do they really read as many books as because everybody's got a big bookshelf there I right know someone will start consulting on how to place an image yeah if they're you get your image updated when the mayor was on network tv after uh, uh the first <laughs> when we uh uh-huh. it's been two months ago or whatever but i could see outside his back i thought that's really nice i need to be invited to his house because uh-huh. <laughs> i'm not even sure that he didn't have livestock back there I'm not oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, but he had, yeah. I think he had a pond back there and stuff. So, oh, yeah. but anyway, uh, they have a place called Rate Room Raider. Oh, uh-huh. and and it's just a website, and these people go, and I think the people get a kick out of it. And you, you need to find something light sometimes. And they I, would, I agree. <laughs> and they would rate the background in your stuff. Picture was great. <laughs> Love the facts that not all the books were were perfect. Some of them were on their side, uh-huh. you know. So, right. anyway, but we do need a break here. And as superintendent of schools, first of all, thank you for all you guys are oh, doing yeah, right now. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for that. I know that um, everybody's trying to figure out where to go and where to go for guidance. Where do you go for guidance on the decisions right now? You jo- know, Joey Hoffmeister, I know that uh, they had a flashpoint last night, I think a primetime version. We get uh, a little bit. You know, during the first part of the pandemic, uh, the State Department of Education, led by Superintendent Hoffmeister, came in with a lot of, you know, just leadership up front. And we were all really just stopping things, getting some guidance on allowances for some of our mandates that we were relieved from. They eliminated some testing. All those things, they, yeah. they took a hard stance up front. Now, since then... Uh, they put in some return to learn guidelines, but they give some ideas. But it, it's as we start getting down to a granular level, it's more of what we're going to do locally. Uh, I say, you know, probably two components that we are, you know, three components of that we're working through on our return to turn to school plan and guidelines. One is our academic services. What are we going to do with academic services? Um, we're going to it's going to look different than what it did last year. It kind of caught all school districts. Uh, you know, no one was really prepared, right. so we have everything in order. Second is health and safety, um, and that's kind of the what we call the operation side, and then the personnel, how we did work with personnel. So from a from an academic services standpoint, um, we are really, you know, you get some guidance from the State Department, but a lot more is you're connecting with other school districts. We have a consortium and other things that we work with to see, okay, what what's possible here? What are we, what issues are we working on? So we're working probably internally what we need and and a lot of other school districts and a lot of the guidance. Health and safety, uh, we are basing our recommendations on CDC guidelines. Uh, But when the CDC came out with their guidelines, they said, you know, these are not hard and fast rules. These are guidelines. Tailor them to your local local community. So what we ended up doing is we put together a task force of staff and some local health officials. And what they're doing is they're consulting with City of Emer- Stillwater Emergency Management, Payne County Health Department, Stillwater Medical Center, some doctors in town. So we are basing it on the CDC, but tailoring it to here locally based on some of our local expertise. And what what some of the numbers are, which uh, I think the numbers this week from what we've seen, mm-hmm. we've had a good trend here the last few days as far as uh, uh, new positives or anything like that. I think it's been a good week, if, if you can say that. Yes, you know, we, and that's been, to see, one of the challenges is, is what, you have to reassess what, what the data is. And what it means, are yeah. Every, yeah. every week. 
So we had, um, you know, we coming into, yeah, we watch the numbers every day. I get, we get some reports right. from our local officials and we are seeing some positive trends and yeah. that is good. I really appreciate the, the uh, city's leadership on the f- uh, face mask ordinance. Uh, we are taking a really hard, st- I mean, a strict stance on face coverings as well. Uh, I think in general, Compared, I don't know how we compare maybe to other states, but when you care for Harris Stillwater uh, to um, to other communities and other um, just uh, big right. cities, we are, uh, I think, in a little bit more of a stronger leadership stance on let's be proactive right. uh, to prevent it. And we're seeing those numbers decrease, and that's really good. And watching the council meeting last night, and, and I defer to the experts. I think that's what... It seems like that's a good idea. It seems uh, like good, good leaders so. listen yeah. to, to, to yeah, wise people. Too, right. And in watching that, uh, it started off with Gary Clark speaking on behalf of Oklahoma State. This mm-hmm. is like last Monday's meeting, I believe. Right. And uh, on behalf of Burns Hargis. Yes. And so you hear what Oklahoma State has to say. And you were the next guy up, yes, I believe. I was, right. And so... I, and then after that, it was a, a little while later, but De- Denise Weber spoke on behalf of uh, Stillwater Medical Center. Okay. And so in able to hear from the, the movers and shakers and the people who are charged with so much responsibility, which to obviously Oklahoma State, Stillwater Public Schools, the Medical Center, and you were all on the same page. And that, to me, was eye-opening, mm-hmm. and, that, and I think that made a big difference. So appreciate you, you going there, and I know that it's not without a lot of research, too. We do, and you know it's hard, Steve and I. As we're working with our staff and working with our parents, and there's just there's fear and and there's a lot of emotions yeah. and just concern and 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 rightfully so. And you will see something on on TV that puts you in a, a mindset of okay, what, what's going to happen if it, that occurs? Right. So we do. I, I'm even. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a health professional. So I need to to lend, right. you know, my listening to them and see what what they're going to say in regard to guidance. And, but anyway, I think that uh, the fact that our leaders were, were all yeah. speaking yeah. at that thing, one, one side or another, but almost all of them were for this. And then others, we saw Tulsa pass theirs a little while later, mm-hmm. using the same language almost exactly, I think. I think they work together. And mm-hmm. so, and Oklahoma City, I think, is having their vote tonight. And from what I just Good. heard, it depends on how the vote goes and when it goes to effective. It's a pretty much unanimous. They'll go effect, I think, t- today. Or right after that, it said immediately. So I guess tomorrow. So well, we, you know, we we are different bodies, and we can act independently. You know, school district has a board, the city has a right. council, the OSU have has a board of regents, leadership, still our medical center. So it's very important that we are communicating and we are we are coordinating because if we don't, then you start getting a lot of mis messaging out, and even uh, that makes it more difficult yeah. from a community to pull together. I had uh, one of the people, one of the conversation points has been uh, wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. Will everybody be required at a certain age? Where would that start? We have. You know, we've taken the stance that when and where we can require face coverings, we should. And we're working through those. We think especially, uh, you know, all of our older kids, we're working on, on face coverings with staff. Um, you know, some issues that we are working through, We've we, you have to have a little flexibility. And we have maybe some kids, kids with, with health needs, uh, you know, breathing sure. that have difficulty. Uh, we have maybe some special needs kids that have difficulty just with the, you know, maybe the touch of a mask, wearing it for long term. We are working on right now is what does pre-K and K look like when you've got young ones coming right. in. Because if you look at some of the, you know, Academy of, of Pediatricians, you know, they have some different guidance on what you do pre-K and K in, in, compared to fourth and right. fifth. But... Um, you know, we, we've never been in a place where we've required face coverings, so we don't know how it looks. I know even sure. myself, as you start adjusting to it more and more, but uh, it, it, it will be, you know, you have to, you have the inconvenience, but you have the, the, the safety on the other side. So how do we balance some of those? Uh, but, you know, really, we're, I think we, when we're compared to other school districts, we're taking a stronger stance than, than most others, especially yeah. in the state of Oklahoma. I know uh, in, in listening to Joy Hoffmeister, um, which I appreciated because, you know, last week it came out where, okay, uh, where it came out of Washington where we need everybody back. Mm-hmm. And and I think the one thing that we can all agree on, everybody wants to be back. They feel oh, yeah. like they need right. to be back. But she made the point of the average teacher, what she said on, on last night, I didn't see all the show, but I saw some of it, 
uh, they, they did an hour special on Flashpoint in prime time. And mm-hmm. was the average teacher in the state of Oklahoma, I think this is way, was over 50, was in their 50s. Probably so, yeah. A- and so, therefore, uh, which is not old, by the way, but it's at a more, you're getting to be in the, in the age group where they're monitoring you more. And mm-hmm. then when you look at cooking staff, janitorial staff, uh, off, all the, the people that make a school go, mm-hmm. uh, you also have however many thousands of people or tens of thousands in the state that, that fall into that category. And they also have to include that. So right. all these factors, and she said, we are going to put the safety of our students and our employees first. Yeah, you, you know, even in the CDC guidelines, is how are you going to uh, accommodate and work through ones who are, are at higher risk and those whether it's a, you know some kind of manual compromise uh, uh, situation or due to age because when we look at even when I look at the the medical numbers on a daily basis you know they'll break it down into categories of who you know who who's in the hospital and what age category so you get an indication of who's being impacted right. the most we have I and, and you're right Steve I you know, we all go to work. We work in, in, in teams and you, you know, you don't really think about, you know, you know, maybe an individual has health issues or you kind of have a general out, general view of what someone's age is. But when you start really getting down to right. the details and start asking people, are they immunocompromised? It, it is, it's more than you would realize. And then also you start getting a better picture of of um, the age span of your well, voice. I'm in my fifties. Kyle just hit 50. I, turn it next year uh, next year i'm 50 so, so there you go mm-hmm. so see it's not old <laughs> i know that's what i've seen when you said old i was like now nah, i'm i'm getting uh, close <laughs> but when they said the average I, I first of all it took me back a little bit i thought really and then i thought it probably is uh so no, we not it yeah so the, so we have that decision what about the uh, the plans that we're making right now you have to have backup plans is it going to be more of a hybrid look you think with with some in class some online yes you know we if you, if you think about um, what the way we're looking at it is, is one is, is we have school, but we need to have an option of the traditional, what we call traditional, is how do we have it, but how do we put all these safety measures in place? So we want a traditional with, you know, maybe we don't have classes canceled, so we're looking at you know, just a regular traditional. And then not only that is if we have to transition to a distance learning like we did last yeah. year. So what we're doing, that traditional, really the, the thing that's looking a little bit different is we're using some online learning management software. So all the lessons, all the grading is starting to go into this online learning management so we can shift quickly till we go to distance learning if we need to do it. Um, and then if you sh- shift to distance and you think, okay, what are the barriers or what are the concerns? And we end up having uh, about a thousand kids we had to mail packets to because they didn't have access to either a device or internet. So we had to come up plans, and we're working through those right now, where if we did shift to distance learning, then we, with the help of the, of the parents, we can't provide 100% of our 6,300. But if we have our assumptions are right, uh, using parents' uh, assistance with the devices and Internet, supplying the ones who need it based on need, we will be able to have 100% connectivity and a device for every child. Okay. So that was part of it. We also are looking at, as we start putting – this traditional plan in place with online learning management, possibility of cons- shifting to distance, then, uh, and we put that combined with our health and health and safety measures, there, we knew that there's going to be, uh, you know, just a, a segment of our, our population, our parents and students who still do not continue to feel safe, even under sure. all things that we put into place. So what we're working on is a a a rigorous virtual model so they can go in and we can put some virtual uh, learning assign teachers have a a connection some of those so they have that option Uh, what we're doing as well you know some people have uh, kind of split it out to virtual and blended where they kind of online but maybe they come on in electives and that's called blended we are just kind of virtual we just kind of call it it's like a virtual plus so what happens if we have say a softball parent for example uh, uh, wants to come in, they, they're un- really concerned about maybe being in the, the environment of 1,500 kids right. at the high, or 1,200 kids at the high school. They want this virtual, but they think, oh, if it may be the softball team is com- com- you know, maybe a cohort of 20 kids, I feel safer with them, so maybe they, oh, we want that virtual option with an elective. So we're combining where they can do virtual and do some elective classes online. So wow. we all call it virtual. It's kind of a virtual plus. Yeah. When you talked about, you mentioned softball there, we're, we're talking about, uh, we're seeing this at the college level where conferences are making uh, 
um, announcements. Sometimes individual universities are. Mm-hmm. It, with the extracurricular stuff, with sports and with uh, uh, choir and band and stuff, mm-hmm. which goes falls under the OSSAA, or, or part of it anyway, right. who makes that decision? Is it is it up to the OSSAA or individual schools? Uh, you know, we just received message from a message from the OSSAA yesterday that, you know, they're monitoring, they're looking at it right now. The plans are con- to continue with activities. They're right. not look. We we have not received any notification that, you know, they're looking at moving football to the spring or right. doing anything there. Which some states, I think maybe New Mexico is is doing some of those things. And They've already made that decision. I you know I hate to say that on the line. I know there was a state I almost wow. think it was, but New somebody Mexico. has yes. okay. So they have right now come out and said, this is the path we're moving to. We're having competitions. Um, so that's, that's the path we're on. Now, locally, you have a decision of what that looks like, what, what it looks like, what, how much we, to the level we want to participate and yet, but, um, I don't know. I think it's just one of those, we will watch the numbers moving forward. How is it going to impact our kids? And, you know, it's what's hard also, Steve is, um, we surveyed our parents, even our staff, over, you know, what's your level of concern? Yeah. And we did a, a scale from, like, very comfortable, comfortable, neutral, uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. And really, our parents, it's almost like split five ways yeah. on what people feel coming back to school. That's why this is such a passionate topic is because people mm-hmm. have a different uh, point of view. Yeah. And it is, as, as Bill Allen was talking about before, it's important to listen. I, I saw that survey that you were doing that. I thought that was a great idea mm-hmm. because I know that in just in listening to, say, the emails that the counselors receive, I thought that was important. It, it mm-hmm. shows you where the mindset is. And with you, it makes your job, it sounds like, even more difficult because there is no consensus here. Yeah, it, it's, it's not. And, you know, it's been a, I, I have, uh, you know, there's, it's been a little challenging time. I've been, this is my, I'm starting my, what, gosh, I'm trying to think now. I think my 20th year as superintendent. Yeah. And I think this is the most challenging situation I've, I've worked through. But, you know, on the, the back side is to see uh, my staff and see what they're doing so far and the amount of just the heart and soul they're pouring into this effort. And we want kids to be in athletics. We, you know, we, that's why we have them. We think they're important. You and I talked yeah. about, you know, growing up all the time, what that meant to us. Uh, we want them to participate, but, you know, we also want, you know, our primary is to also keep them safe, too. Yeah. We do have a graduation coming up. Coming up. On, yes. You know, we put down a primary date on Friday and then a, a rain date on our a weather date. Maybe it's the next day. But, you know, I have, I've looked at the 10 day a couple of days ago and it's looking <laughs> looking good. So I'm not sure you may pull it up to see what. What it says on Friday. You know, though, I'll be honest with you, Mark. Um, <laughs> rain seems like a pretty small thing to worry about these yeah, days. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It, I was. I'm probably a little bit more concerned about the heat, but I think it looks like we're not going to have one of those. Friday would be. Uh, is it the 24th? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. It would be. Uh, I have sunshine, 93. It's, oh, okay. It's a very so, slight chance of shower. That's a pretty good day. You no, know, because when you're sitting here trying to make these plans, and you know, we went originally, and I think this is the whole the, the COVID pandemic. It, we. You know, we have a we work through things. Your your program here, mine at the school. You know, we work through things, and we're kind of adjusting it year after year. Sure. And sometimes it'll take four years or five years to get it worked out. And then you also have these things that are traditional that you just you hang on to every year that you love. And you know, we were um, you know, same thing with graduation. We have a big, huge graduation in Gallagher Iba. It's indoors. It's it's really a special moment for our kids. And we were just trying to hang on to that so much and give that to our kids. That was our heart. And we were looking to Oklahoma City, made that initial, and then looked back to, ah, you know, all things considered, it's probably going to be better to pull it back to, yeah. to Stillwater. But, you know, it's just the, I, I don't, we talk our staff, the adaptability. I, I feel like I'm adaptable, but I've had to even be more so. I would hope everybody understands now, because today isn't like yesterday, and tomorrow will be oh, different, yeah. too. So You know, we, we started planning for this. Um, you know, back into May, and the guidance we were getting in May was things are starting to lower down, and nothing was, you know, yeah. it was, we're just going to, hey, we ma- we managed over it. It's kind of just keep it low. You'd even see those graphs that had a, the bubble, and then the bubble would just be flat or nothing. And and as all this guidance we were getting back in May and early June started coming up, and then you start seeing numbers start increasing back, and then you start, all these recommendations are starting to change. And we, early on, I think it was at the, June 26th board meeting, we had originally, and we've been talking to schools like we're recommending face masks. We think that's what we're hearing from everyone. And we saw early on that numbers are changing. Our, our, our parents are starting to see this. So we early on said, 
Yeah, a face mask, a face coverings are when and where we should, when and where we can. There you go. Hey, thanks for all you do oh, for yeah. the one, but uh, it's coming in. We'll do this again. You, you know how to get a hold of me, so anytime you need some airtime, let's let me know, and I'll send you a note here in a couple sure. of weeks. We can do all this right, again. We'll so I appreciate it. Good luck with graduation. All right. Okay, thank you. There's Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Mark Moore. A brief timeout, and OSU VP Kyle Ray is right around the corner. It's Stillwater's largest annual retail sales event, Crazy Days, going on now at the Stillwater Milling Agri Center. Please wear your mask and shop the Agri Center's Crazy Days savings out on our front porch. Crazy bargains on all kinds of items for your yard. Crazy deals on all kinds of seeds. Crazy.